this Doric TV thing is just, oh, I just kind of describe with a super afternoon I've had. I've never managed to speak so much. <laughs> In the memories it has brought back, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be going around my head the whole night now till bedtime. And I'm so glad and I, it uh, managed to help somebody. It's something's going to come out of uh, my blithers and maybe rubbish to some folk. But never mind. It's just, I think it's true and I think it's clean and just a good life. I know, and, and the, the really the, the, the crux of this thing that we're doing, mm -hmm. Redoric TV, is flick, flicking back into the past. Mm -hmm. Well, here, as village, had a boat yard. They built boats, and it was a it was a good going thing. And there was a fish curer. Father, there was a curing of the heron. There was neither that new. And I mean, long ago, they had the horses and carts, and whole families worked at it fishing. There wasn't a, there wasn't a lack of jobs then. And every summer, in the brook, they used to come for the Shetland Isles, they used to come for Bucky, Cullen, uh, Ireland, they used to come, because we work at we uh, um, a lassie for Ireland, and the brook was just teeming with folk. What a difference now, there's no curers, there's no boat building yard, there's three in the brook at one time for repairing boats and building boats. I mean, all the, the, the men here every day at 12 o'clock for the hotel good, doing it a yard, or nearly every second who's in Petuli had somebody working in the boat yard, and all the men come up the road to him for dinner with a great big log, can a block, a wood, a blow the rear room. And I suppose that great big block burnt until supper time till they come back when they're in. It was every, every day you could go with the with the, the money's coming up the road. And they were happy days, weren't they? That's right, I couldn't mind in that. We'd, we used to we used to play in the middle of the road. We used to play bases and that in the middle of the road. There was no cars. There a few. It was horse and cart. The tatty money used to come <laughs> with horse and cart. And there was Elsie Smith used to come with her horse and cart. Because I mean, in, in my good joy, my daughter, when she was little, she says, uh, she come running in any day and she says, hey, the tatty money's a wifey. Because <laughs> <laughs> she don't do her he's and I think he can. I've met my match here, haven't I, Ethel? I thought I could speak, but my goodness, ain't I? <laughs> but this is for to click, Sabu. Oh, Turn it in here, Ethel. It's a pullover. And this is a shoe that heeds. Put the car shoot our heads. So it matches perfect, see? And you were saying that you, you do not have seams. I didn't sew them, I knit them together. You knit the seams together. Mm -hmm. You knit the seams together. You mm, didn't see any seams. That's clever. It's all fashioned wire, Dean. That's you, isn't it, Ethel? The all, all fashioned wire, Dean. That's right. I'll be right. finishing up speaking to my seal because nowadays you've nobody to speak to. And things come into your mind that you've got to speak about and then when somebody comes in, you've forgotten. This is the value of this kind of thing, oral history, isn't it? That's right. That's the right. The last year that I was got in was doing in Yarmouth in 1953. In the digs that we was in, there was a loony, a six-year-old, Jimmy. And he used to come being into a room at night and snuggle up to me and he did... He's, he was just enough a fine loony. So the right next he says to me, Ethel, you speak Scotch to me and I'll speak double Dutch to you. So after we come home, I got a letter for him. Oh, he was broken hearted and I was such a kind person and hoping that I would come back again. So two years ago, I've still a brother-in-law stays doing in Yarmouth and we was speaking about the the time it came down to work, and I spoke about it as Jimmy Hannant. My brother in law says, The minute he says, I play golf, we had Jimmy Hannant. He says, Would you like to meet him? So the next time that I was doing in Yarmouth, 
He took him up to the Gulf, Kukusi, and met him. If they lie there staying. So he's crying to the to I uh, there to the Gulf Hussey. Come and meet this special lady from Scotland. And you are Ethel. You are a special lady. Not only in Petuli, but in Scotland. <laughs> it used to be the net shade when, when I was little. And then it was the after my daddy died and my father didn't hear nets. He was just a, a he had a bow to his ear. And then it was made into a kitchen, for the kind of kitchen. It's a kitchen, old fashioned kitchen. And then during the war, my granny got a partition put across, it was for here to here. And the bailer was in a corner for the bail to close. And they cemented a chip pan on a top of it. And that was all the time of the war, for nothing was rushing. That was everybody's supper in the village. Fish and chips, a mealy pudding and chips, or a pie and chips. But these to, oh, and these to come over for us after, because there was no chip shop here. And that was during the war years. So if us hoose could tell stories at sale, it would need better than me. <laughs> I think you need, you need a body. I thought you didn't know about it at all. So that was that's a story, another story, the, the, the chip show. It's, it, it's not just gansies that you knit. Look at this, but look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? Tell you, I suppose about 50, I would say. You've knitted 50 shawls. Only easy 50. Well, Ethel, I think you should be in the Guinness Book of Records. Well, if it's near the worldwide Guinness Book of Records, it could be in the Padulis <laughs> Book of Records. You have knitted the most amount of Gansies there on everybody I would ken. Oh, well, even my grandson, during us looking, he's been playing in his garage. For hours, over the internet, is the internet? Yeah. Every night is the Bundy the kind, and he come on and he says, if it was, he said, oh, my grandma's a legend. He's right. <laughs> he says. And you came with Bundy, Alan, he mm -hmm. came to my house and he sang and he played his guitar for Doric TV. He's oh, lovely. Well, that's my grandson. Well, I can see the resemblance. So I can, what a lovely family. Uh -huh. Ciao. I suppose what if that means comment on you and you met tongue arrest. <laughs> but that's me being on this Doric adventure at your own. Something that I never hear doing. I'm awfully pleased about it. I've been on Landward TV and I've been on Radio 4, I think it was. I was interviewed about my life and I was at the got into the hearing so I'm going to shut my moon and shut my in <laughs> Ethel <laughs> we're two of a kind Ethel we're two of a kind